Hey, welcome back to Cards and Comics, and today I got a video um, where I'm really looking hard at just how rare the PSA 8.5 grade is. And it's kind of the mythical unicorn grade um, that, you know, a lot of people have heard of, but very few people have actually seen, <laughs> especially on their uh, grading orders. And so what I've got here is I've taken, uh, I'm doing some really deep data analysis of a few players I collect. So this is Willie Mays. And so this is every Willie Mays card. And these are base cards. So and I've chosen base cards for this analysis because they have the most uh, cards submitted. But in general, they're the most valuable cards. There's a few all-star cards that are, you know, and maybe some combo cards. But in reality, you know, the base cards are um, what people um, typically collect, you know, when they play or collect. And they're you know, some of the most valuable cards um, for William A. So, and I've got them ranked here in different orders. And so this is the entire population of seven, seven, five, eights, eight, five, nines, and tens for every year. And don't worry about the order over here on the left. I've, I've got them ranked in different different ways for my spreadsheets. But um, then I have the total cards actually submitted, including you know everything that's been submitted uh, that's been graded, including qualifiers and then what I'm calling high grade is total high number of high grades is you know every seven seven five to, to ten basically in existence and then which percentage of total cards submitted are high grade and then I've got some rankings over here um, that I'll get into maybe in some later videos but in general this is kind of the high grade or the I call this the the collector grade or maybe the investment grade cards, you know, the, the, the grades high enough, you get the high end collector looking at it now. Um, so before I get into the real 8.5 question is, you know, just the first question is what does the availability look like, you know, for a player like Willie Mays, Willie Mays has 27 base cards uh, issued and uh, over multiple uh, years and different sets in those years. And if you look at the, uh, this availability chart, so this is, you know, the, the PSA 8, which is kind of the mo the standard, you know, most collected high-end card of, uh, of most players in Vintage. And you can see the lowest availability is 53 tops and the highest is 72 tops. And then throughout this um, analysis, you'll see that certain cards kind of pop out. Like here, the 62 tops is much more available than the 58 or sorry, less available than the 58, the 55, the 66, which is considered to be pretty rare. So, and even 56. So this shows why the 62 tops is so uh, expensive in a PSA because it's just got a real low availability. Now, um, you know, in some, in some of the videos I've seen where people are talking about low pops and, and availability, look at the PSA eight availability of some of these cards. You know, um, I, I saw a video where they were talking about how, you know, ASM uh, 300 and a 9.8, it's got like a 1,000 or 1,100. Well, I mean, the most available card of Willie Mays in a PSA 8 is 1,244, and that's a 72 tops. So there's not, you know, if, if, if you're thinking a 1,000 is really a low availability, these vintage Mays cards, the base cards, you know, PSA 8, you know, are, are pretty low in availability. And if you go down to just total availability of high grade, so PSA 7 to PSA 9, you know, at 1,000, you know, there's quite a few cards below the 1,000 uh, card availability in all grades, 7 to 9. Um, sorry, 7 through 10. I should say this is 7 through 10, so I've got this wrong. Um, I'll make that little correction here. This is PSA 7 through 10. So the total availability of every card graded you'll see that you know there's multiple sets here that don't have even 200 cards available in those grades many below 500 and even still more below a thousand but even even the highest available card which is 72 2690 you'd say okay that card's easy to find and you know pricing has reflected that over the years but you know and this is going to and, and if i do and which i plan on doing Hank Aaron, Clemente, Mantle, we're going to see a similar pattern. You know, maybe some different numbers in terms of different cards have different availability in terms of just how hard they are to grade, but, you know, um, it's going to follow a similar pattern. Now, 
in terms of you know the 50s cards are harder to get than 60s cards and so 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 forth which makes sense but again if you look at this chart you see the 62 tops really pops out you'll see that you know in all cases the 53 tops and the 52 tops are by far the hardest card to find in that PSA 7 to 10 grade and you know a card that kind of sticks out is also the 55 Bowman so that 55 Bowman which has gone up quite a bit uh, makes sense because it's very low on availability in that 7 to 10 grade. And you'll see it's the, sec it's the third hardest to get in a PSA 8. So, again, when we look at these cards and I analyze PWCC's auction results, you'll see why, you know, a 52 top, or sorry, a 62 tops maze or a 58 Bowman, or, or sorry, 58 tops maze is bringing so much more money, even in a PSA 7. It's just that there's just not a lot of them out there. And, you know, so now next analysis was, you know, looking at the frequency of some of these grades. So the eights, nines, you know, eight fives, nine. So eight, eight, five, nine. I was looking at these three because, you know, you would theoretically see more eights, less nines and eight fives are kind of a mystery. And uh, so I did some statistical analysis there. And, you know, so if you look at the average cards graded by Millie Mays, the base cards, right? 27 base cards on average there's 327 eights 13 8.5s and 48 nines so this just shows you the 8.5 grade which should probably be closer to right you know like maybe like 150 to 200 is like you know uh, one tenth of that and it's you know basically almost four times lower than the PSA 9 grade in terms of availability there's just not on average, not a lot of PSA 8.5s are available. And if you look at percentage wise, kind of just shows you that, you know, 10% of maze cards grades a PSA 8 and 1.5% grade a 9, 0.4% of all PSA graded maze cards come back at 8.5. And so you can see this number should be somewhere in the four to five range and it's 0.4 so again it's 10 you know 10 times lower than what you would expect um, and then if you just look at overall availability so this is how available every Willie Mays card is and uh, uh, let me uh, do the sort again by 8.5 just to make the chart a little bit more and you can see that in some cases there's some cards that have zero availability like the 62 tops but you know there's a lot of ones and twos and threes and fours i mean the most available is obviously the 72 which makes sense but you know 50 cards is the highest in terms of availability so even a 72 tops maze 8.5 is pretty darn rare and um there are so many cards that have below 10. i mean um it's like 16 cards out of 27 are below 10 total um cards are available in the 8.5 grade so you know this analysis is really just to show you that the 8.5 grade is pretty mythical and, and and it's pretty much a unicorn and i don't know what this means for value because you know the nines always bring more money but you know, that value that you see difference between the eight and the um, nine. And so, you know, I don't know if you guys knew this, but SMR used to calculate an 8.5 value by doing this simple mathematical equation. They took the value of the eight and the value of the nine. They took the difference divided by four and added that to the PSA eight value. So if you do the math, like, you know, you say, okay, well, the you know, if you do the quick math here and you say, okay, well, the eight's worth, you know, $800 and the nine's worth 3000 And so the difference there is 2200 You would, you know, take this and divide it by four and you then, you know, um, add, <laughs> sorry, you would then add, um, you know, those the difference to that card yes and uh, i'll just do it with my hand sorry my excel skills aren't very good but then that's what they would say so this would be you know your eight nine 
and this would be your 8.5 value in SMR. So that's how they got the values, right? So it would be $800, 1350 and 3000 And that is how they calculated a lot of their 8.5 values when it first you know, they first came out. But if you look at the chart here and you see like total availability of maze cards in 8.5, you've got a lot of cards like the 65, the 66. You know, I mean, that 65 sh is shocking. You know, that's that low. Um, you know, the 67, I mean, 13 cards, 71, 14 cards. That was actually kind of surprising. Even 63 at 16 is pretty surprising. You know, now personally, you know, I have the 65. I have the 64, the 67, and the 69 and an 8.5. So I have four maze 8.5s. And so if you look at it, the 65 and the 64 are, are below 10. And the 67 is right there at 13. So I actually have one of the three 65 maze PSA 8.5s. Um, and, you know, I didn't even know how rare it was until I, I did this math. I knew that they were hard to get. Um, so, you know, that makes me feel okay. You know, like, hey, I... I, I I caught a card that was, you know, rare, but is it rare because PSA just doesn't grade the, the 0.5 cards as often as it should? Because again, if you go to frequency here uh, of how often they, they appear, you know, they're, they're four times as hard to find as a PSA nine. Um, and they theoretically are lower grade. And so this is my theory on why the 8.5 grade is so much, um, lower than it uh, than it should be is PSA when they issued the 8.5 grade I was very active on PSA forums so we asked PSA a lot of questions in the forums on how they were going to uh, determine the grade and everyone thought it was going to be based on centering right this idea of high-end low-end eights right was being debated and the whole theory was that perfectly centered PSA 8s would come back with the half grade. So when everyone got their cards to get regraded, to get the bump, right? Because PSA offered this special to, to be able to, you know, have your cards reviewed for the 0.5 bump. All of a sudden, all these perfectly centered cards are coming back without the, you know, the 0.5. But cards that were off center were get, getting the 0.5 and and immediately people were just like what what's going on and then we found out through you know different communication and and, and, and talking to PSA it was really the pack freshness of the card like you know the gloss the the, the corners you know the edges you know the, you know like surface that actually weighed more than centering which was totally against what most co collectors would want in that 8.5 and there was some backlash i remember there was a lot of people upset about you know how psa chose to, to um select their cards that would be eight fives right and since then i really think psa never really got to a place where they were comfortable understanding what the qualifications are for an eight five uh, because you know collectors had one idea they had another they talked about eye appeal, which ended up not really mattering. And so I think in the end, the 8.5 has never been defined well enough for them to use it in their grading. And I think, you know, older graders, you know, that has been there since the beginning or, you know, before the 8.5, the, the 0.5 grade existed, they don't i don't think they they force them to use it or they don't really acknowledge it exists um because it's so undefined you know that you don't have a roadmap to figure out how to get to the 0.5 and so uh in the end you know if you just look at this availability chart again this is one of the great mysteries and in, and in, in psa grading is how can the 0.5 grades be so low um, how can they they appear at such a low frequency when they've virtually been in, in the hobby for, gosh, it's been what, over 10 years? Um, so, you know, I think in the end, 
they are unicorns. They are definitely mythical. They are definitely way too low in the percentage here um, to be to make sense. So I would say that you know there's definitely uh, an issue with you know how they grade 8.5s. Now the 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 million dollar question is how do you value 8.5s? Do you pay an even bigger premium? You know, I showed you the calculation how SMR was calculating value. Should these eight fives be worth more because they're so rare? You know, going back to this chart here, should my 65 8.5 maze be worth closer to a nine uh, because it's such a lower pop, right? You know, flipping over to the 65 tops chart, um, which is right here, you know, there's three 8.5s and there's 38 nines and even one 10. So should the 8.5 be worth more money because it's so much rarer? Should there be a bigger premium on the 8.5 versus the 8? I think 100% yes. Now, should it be, I don't know how you, you know, how you redo the math, you know? Um, you know, do you divide by 2 instead of 4 on what the actual value of the 8.5 is? You know, I, I think that is, um, you know, sort of the question, you know, um, you know, how do you get to the actual value of the 8.5? You know, um, you know, and I do think, you know, the cards that are on this tail end right here, you know, you know, starting in 71 and working their way down, these 8.5s are definitely rare. Uh, you know, I don't know how you try to value them, you know, but that value should be, you know, if there's a fulcrum, right, where the 8.5 is in the middle, 8 and the 9 is on each end in terms of value, the 8.5 shouldn't be in the middle. It should be closer to the nine in terms of value for some of these cards because they're just they're so rare. And in my opinion, the reason I collect 8.5s and you see a lot of them in some of my older videos is that they were good value because in my opinion, the cards were nicer than eights in, in, in almost all instances. I, I enjoyed the grades better than eights. I felt like they were worth more. And so I collected them I did not collect them because I thought they were going to be such a low pop. I collected them because they were just nicer cards. So, so that's it. You know, the 8.5 grades are definitely a mystery, definitely underrepresented in the um, pop report. And in my opinion, definitely some of them should be worth more money. So hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you, you learned a little bit more about 8.5s. And when I get some more players analyzed, I'll definitely come back with another video.